if you are just getting started in hacking, what is the first thing you will do? What? I, I don't know. Well, you'll make yourself anonymous so that when you do some funky stuff, you don't get tracked even if you are doing it for the ethical reasons. Let me make it clear. How important it is that you disguise yourself before doing anything on the internet. Let me share how many hackers got caught due to not making themselves anonymous. The reason varies, like some of them got comfortable and left their self open, or some of them forgot to turn on their proxies, and the list goes on. If these guys should have used anonymity tools better, they could have avoided getting caught. Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, we learn how to set up a proxy chain in Linux to achieve complete anonymity. Before diving into the setup process, let's briefly understand the concept of proxy chains. Proxy chains act as intermediaries between your machine and a target server. By using proxy servers, you can conceal your IP address from the target server making it difficult for them to trace your location. What do I mean by that? Suppose this is IP of my machine and this is the IP of the target server. In this example, if I try to scan the server of this company, indeed, I will learn about the company, but the company will also know about me. And that is by checking where the request is coming from. From that, they will get my IP address and by tracking that IP, they will know my location my address, and all other details related to me. By using proxy chains, we introduce a middleman, which hides our IP address, replacing it with something else. And that way, when someone checks the logs of the server, they find that something else instead of our IP address. That way, when they try to track us down, they are unable to do so because of the middleman. You would say, as a middleman, we can also use proxies, then why the proxy chain? While VPN also provides similar functionality, using multiple proxy servers known as proxy chains adds an extra layer of complexity for anyone trying to track your location. To set up proxy chains in Linux, you need to ensure that the necessary packages such as proxy chains and Tor are installed on your system. If not, you can install them by simply saying apt install and then the package name you want to install. I'll do it by writing sudo apt install proxy chains tor and I will also add a flag dash y and enter my password. In my system, it's already installed, but for you, it will start the installation process. Now, once everything is set up on your system, it's time to make changes to your configuration file for the proxy chains. In order to find the proxy chains, I'll write locate and then the package name in my case, it would be proxy chains. But mostly, the configuration file is located in the slash etc folder. So you can say nano and then slash etc slash proxy chain dot c o n f and press enter. Once you press enter, it will open up the proxy chain dot c o n f file. Once the file is open, we want to enable some functionality in the tool by removing the hash at the beginning of the line. To disable some functionality, you can add a hash at the beginning of that line. We have the dynamic chain, which is disabled. In order to enable it, I will remove the hash in front of it. This line is enabled. In order to disable it, I'll just add a hash in front of it. And then I'll leave the random chain as is. It's disabled. And then I will come over to the proxy DNS. And for me, it's enabled. In your case, it might not be enabled. So what you can do is you can remove the hash in front of it and that will make it enabled. Now, the last thing I want to do is we have the IP address for SOX4. So you can either leave it as is or you can change it to SOX5 or you can add another line which would say SOX5 and the IP address would be the same 127.0.0.1 and then 9050. Now that everything is set up, you would say, what was the strict chain, what is dynamic chain, and what is this random chain, ETC? So let me explain that briefly. You can use all of the three, all of them will work fine. But the difference is in strict chains, you have a list of specific proxy servers that you are allowed to use. 
and you use them one after another in a fixed order. You always stick to this set of list of proxies and you don't deviate from it. In dynamic proxy chains, you also have a list of proxy servers, but you can switch between them based on different factors like speed, location, or security. You are not restricted to a fixed order and you can change which proxy server you are using depending on what you need at the moment. In random proxy chains, you have a pool of proxy servers to choose from and you select which one to use randomly each time you want to connect to the internet. There is no specific pattern or order to follow. You just pick a proxy server randomly each time you need one. Now that everything is set up, we can start using the proxy chain. For that, the first thing I will do is close the file and then on the terminal, I'll say sudo service store start and this will start the proxy chains. Now, in order to check the status of the proxy chain, I'll say the same thing, which is sudo service store. Instead of start, I'll say status. And you can see that the proxy chains are running. Now that the proxy chains are running, let's look at it in the browser and see if we are not leaking out our IP address. So I'll say Firefox www.google.com and I'll say what is my IP address. If I open up that in the browser, you can see we are leaking our IP address. I have blurred that out for privacy reason, but you can clearly see that we are leaking out our IP address and it's not good. It's because we need to make some more configuration to our browser in order to use the proxy chain. So I'll come over to the settings of Firefox and in the settings, I'll search for proxy. And in the proxy, I'll click on settings. And in the settings, I'll say manual proxy configuration. Now, if you are willing to configure the HTTP proxy or HTTPS proxy, you are more than welcome to do so, but I'm not here to do that. I'll just do the configuration for SOX. And I'll say 127.0.0.1. Remember, we did added this to our configuration file in the proxy chain. And I'll also add the port number, which is 9050. And you also remember this from the configuration of our proxy chain file. Once I add that and click on OK, close out the Firefox and then run it again, and then try and say, what is my IP address? And you can clearly see that we are greeted with the CAPTCHA, it's because we are using proxies. I'll fast forward the thing so that you don't have to suffer from the pain of solving this CAPTCHA. You can see now we are routing our traffic through the Tor networks. If you find that your network is slow and it's because you are using the Tor networks, you can make it a little bit more faster by using some custom proxy list. In order to use that, you can come over to your browser and search for free proxy servers. My personal favorite is GeoNode, but you can use any one of that. Now, once you come over to the GeoNode, you will be greeted with some IP addresses, their ports, and their protocols. So you can just copy the IP address, come over to your terminal, close out the Firefox, and go to proxy chains configuration file, which would be sudo nano slash etc slash proxy chains .conf. You can make, make it full screen, come back over, and I already have the IP addresses, some of them, and I will comment those out. But let me explain that a little bit. So right over here in your default configuration file, you have some examples. In the example, the first thing is the protocol, the second one is the IP address, and the third one is the port number. Now, if you're using a paid version of the proxy server, you will be given a username and a password, but for the free version, you don't need that. In order to explain what this HTTP is, if you're using the web version of the proxy server list, you will be given the protocol as HTTP. But if you're using the Tor networks, you will be given the SOX4 or SOX5. The difference between SOX4 and SOX5 is that the SOX4 is an older version, less secure and less faster. SOX5 is a little bit more faster and a little bit more secure than SOX4. I'll not go into the details, what SOX4 is, what kind of technology they use. That is for some other video, but just understand the basics. Now, I have added the SOX4, the IP address, and the port number. Let's add one more from the US. I'll copy the IP address of that, come back over, 
we'll reduce the gap a little bit, add SOX 4, add the IP address, and after that, we'll add the port number. And then I will close out the file, sudo system. It's not important to restart, but I'm just doing it in order to show that you can do that. So I'll say sudo system restart tor and then try to access Google. Now I'll say, you can see that it's a little bit more faster than the previous one, which was we were using the Tor networks. Now I'll say, what is my IP address? And it's not bringing up the IP address. Anyway, we'll go to the NordVPN version. So it's not bringing up the IP address, but anyway, surely you can see that we are not leaking our IP address. One thing we can do is, let's just comment that down, save the file again, Let's open up the browser. And you can see we are routing through it. So this is pretty much it for the video. I hope you did learn something new and you did understood how to use proxy chain and make yourself more anonymous while surfing the internet or doing some funky stuff. So have a pleasant day, bye for now, and I will see you in the next one.